Hey everyone, welcome to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 72. 72. Brad Machinter. Ooh, that's a good one. Yep. And Tim Heed. That's it. Yeah, Heater. That's it. All right. Well, this episode we're going to be lamenting over the Sharks' uh, last <laughs> week of play, along with uh, kind of talking a little bit about the uh, the new claim off the waivers there, Stefan Nason. Yep. I'm going to go over some really sad, pathetic stats <laughs> and follow it up with some happy stats. Maybe end on a good note. Uh, do some uh, EASHL highlights and fancy league updates, and then uh, also the week ahead, which is very short. Yeah, very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, well, we're going to start with the airing of grievances. I've got a lot of problems with you people, and now you're going to hear about it. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> So uh, I've got my, I don't know if it's aluminum, but it's, it's my, my pole. For those of you who watch the uh, the Seinfeld episode, know about Festivus, there's the aluminum pole instead of the Christmas tree. <laughs> it's, it's easier to decorate. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to throw that down now. Uh, yeah, so uh, airing of grievances. Let's go ahead and start off with the week in review. Uh, we start off in, uh, against Arizona. Um, that game actually, it, it wasn't as horrible as uh, people are going to make it out to be. Of course, it's a loss. So it sucks. But, you know, a 3-2 loss. Aaron Dell actually played fairly well. And if we look mm-hmm. back to what I was predicting about that game, what I was saying was I think that the goaltending is going to play uh, well. But Aaron yeah. Dell's not going to have to stand on his head because the D's going to tighten up a little bit. And I still don't think we're going to get out of that game. And that's more or less exactly what happened. Kind of yeah. shocking that right. I was right. <laughs> yeah. Sharks just couldn't score. Couldn't I score. mean. Against a very defensive team, very uh, they're well known for not giving up a lot of goals. They're right. stingy. Uh, I think Darcy Kemper played, and uh, he's been one of the top goalies in the league, if not the top goalie right now mm. in terms of goals against average and save percentage. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the system that that Arizona plays. Yeah. It's not just the goaltending because he wasn't some all-star backup goalie in <laughs> L.A. for a long time or anything. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a hard team when you fall behind. Yeah. Uh, but the bigger news coming out of Arizona it was the very first game of Taylor Hall being traded from New Jersey. Uh, Taylor Hall is, or was, probably, he was going to be a, a UFA after, um, unrestricted free agent after the season. New Jersey, even worse, if you can imagine, than the Sharks season right now. And they looked like a team that was going to be good on paper when they started the season, much like the Sharks right now. But uh, they are blowing up the team. And so yep. they uh, they sent Taylor Hall packing, and Arizona won the trade war, if you will. Because yeah. if you what, if you're reading the news, uh, or trade news, trade rumors, whatever, in the last two weeks, it's been going like crazy. <laughs> so I was glad it was finally over. Because people were trying to work out trades for the Sharks to get Taylor Hall. And I kept saying, I don't think it's very realistic, mainly yeah. because we don't have a first-round pick. And not that they wouldn't trade with the Sharks because they don't have a first-round pick, but there's so many other teams that do have a first-round pick that would want him. And that's exactly what they got out of right. it. Plus, you know, you know, some little stuff out of there. Yeah, some folks kind of coming up with scenarios where, you know, we potentially trade, like, Brent Burns, you know, to go to go after uh, Taylor Hall, right? That's the, the type of guy that can pull in. Uh, a guy like Taylor Hall, maybe this season stats wise not so awesome, but um, you know, uh, player for player, they're they're supremely talented in their their rifle positions. So um, guys, you know, trying to work some sort of trade out on the, the armchair GM, uh, trying to get that one done. But mm-hmm. uh, one of the things actually in this game that you liked about Burns, he was actually playing very physical. Yes, uh, I saw him. He hit a couple guys, and he, he looked better to me. He looked a little bit more conservative in a way, if that's. The right word. Okay. I don't know if that's the right word, but a little bit more, um, I guess, stay at home. Um, he he scored the goal. I mean, he wasn't. Didn't he score in that? Was in that game? He ripped that, or was that St. Louis? I think it was St. Louis. That but that's okay. We can just keep on plowing through <laughs> as if nothing wrong happened. Right. Uh, so no, no. But he was. He was playing a much more physical game, and he played. He stuck more to to playing better defense. I think. Yeah. And and that seemed to help out. Now again, we lose by a score of three to two, and this is going to be a theme that's uh, going throughout the week. Not just the losing, but the fact that we're not able to score more than two goals in a game. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of, uh, again, one of those things that, you know, with this roster on paper, we should be able to put the puck in <laughs> a lot more than we have. I can understand the defensive woes, right, because we've got mm-hmm. two supremely offensive talents on the blue line, and maybe that kind of leads to some some turnovers and some bad chances against. But, sure. gosh, putting the puck in the net shouldn't be a problem for this team. Right, and then if you go... <laughs> 
Uh, the one thing I do remember this game is how it ended, and it was very bad. Uh, oh, yeah. Six on three, so uh, <laughs> the Arizona Coyotes, knowing that, probably knowing that the Sharks' power play is, <laughs> is non-existent, took some liberties that they didn't care at that point, trying to get the win. Because they're only up by a goal, so the Sharks pulled their goalie. They got a couple penalties, so they actually had a six on three, which is pretty rare. I don't really, you don't Extremely see that good. very often. Um, and they almost scored an empty net or a six on three, which would have been really bad. But yeah, they just there was no was it a minute and twenty seconds down by a goal, six on three, and I don't think they got one shot on goal. I think it was forty seconds of sub six on three. The, the, the minute twenty might have been uh, just the power play itself. Yeah, uh, the the five on four and the six on four in that case. But the thing that bothered me about that was it was forty seconds of passing and and nothing else really. There was no there was, it was one soft shot on goal I think. And the really sad thing to me out of the whole thing, take away the fact that it was it was um, there there was no real offense there. I felt like the Sharks were getting pressured. Yeah, like, totally. Like Carlson was at the point, and whoever it was that was playing at the top of that triangle was pushing him, and he was just kind of walking the blue line. Yeah. To, and just I, this is the kind of thing that bothers me is the amount of passing and the amount of overlooking. And, and there's three guys you outnumber them two to mm-hmm. one on the ice and you can't get a solid opportunity you can't get a shot on net. just put the puck on the net and crash you could tell that the teams are selling out and going after the defenseman because they know they're either going to block the shot block the pass and then it's out of the zone and they can go and score an empty netter yeah and the sharks are just they're not i'm going to get into this much later about uh not playing strong in front of the other team's net Mm -hmm. which is what we were talking about on their own side a couple weeks ago um, they're perimeter players. They're not going towards the hard, the hard nose areas and the crease and the in in the uh, the slot area. So it this is a perfect example of nobody's in front of the net. Yep. Nobody nobody knew what to do really. They look like their heads were cut off, like chickens with their heads cut off, just running around and actually not running around. Everyone's no. standing still. Yeah. That was part of the problem. Nobody moved. There was no movement. It was pathetic. Carlson with the puck was pretty much the only one moving, and everyone's just watching him like. Wow, he can skate. <laughs> Look at him skate. Look at that flow move, you know? Like, do something. The only thing is everyone in Teal is is watching him do that. Everybody in a Arizona Coyotes jersey yes. is pressuring. Yep. It was ridiculous. Again, you've got, you outnumber them two to one. They've only got three guys, and you're telling me that they're pressuring you? How? How is that, that, that that's the case? For 40 seconds, you're skating around with the puck, passing back and forth with each other. How does that puck not hit the net at least 10 times when you've got... Two to one advantage on I mean, the ice. Even a five on three power play. Yeah. You should be moving that puck sideways, right? Going from east to west, not north to south. Or doing something you, and getting shot after shot after shot. You play with the sense of urgency of, holy cow, we need to score a goal in this last minute to tie the game and go to overtime. It's pathetic. Just feet not moving at all. It's just, they're stuck in molasses. And that, you know, honestly, there's a lot of people that, that you know, they'll, they'll say things about the, the goaltending, what all the goalies suck and everything else. So, oh, you know, like we've been saying, oh, the defense, the defense needs to get better. And we see the goal scoring needs to happen and whatnot. And, um, you know, the power play, it, the, to me right now, the power play is probably the worst thing about the San Jose Sharks. Uh, and that's saying a lot because there's, there's a lot of things that are going wrong <laughs> on this team. And the power play has got to be the number one thing that it's not the thing that's making them lose it's not the thing that's holding them back but is the most atrocious thing that you can see on the ice right now is the San Jose Sharks with the man advantage I'd much rather see them on the PK because they at least get chances on the PK if the power play they, they can't even break across the blue line right it's ridiculous so anyway that was we're still on just the first game <laughs> so this is kind of like we're getting it it's, all out it's angry again we didn't, we didn't do a live tonight so i think we didn't <laughs> get out a lot of this stuff so it's going to come out in the show unfortunately for you sorry <laughs> so again going with the festivist the airing of grievances <laughs> right so we'll move on to the second game here and i think it'll be a little less airing because it'll be just repeating sure. uh, of the same types of things so go ahead second game st louis blues yep uh Going <laughs> once again into the third period, tied to two to two, and the Sharks make one errant kind of. It wasn't a pass; it was kind of. Uh, Carlson was caught up high, I think, in the offensive zone. Yeah. Came back on a, on a break, and uh, of all people, it was a defenseman, Pitcher Angelo, right, that scored the winner. He put he put this beautiful shot over mm-hmm. Jones's shoulder. Um, I, I I a lot of people were faulting Jones on this. Like some people were saying he was out of position. I thought he had decent position on him. I thought it was good. I think it was just an elite shot because he put it in such a tight square in the corner yeah. that I think that guy's making that shot maybe two times out of ten. You know? Like 20%. Maybe. Maybe, maybe even less than that. Yeah. So it, it was just a great shot. And it, yeah. 
I, I, I hate to say it's luck. It wasn't luck. It's good skill. But it's just unlucky. And kind of what the Sharks players are saying after this week is they're instead of finding ways to win, they're finding new ways to lose the game. Yeah. And this is one of them. So then you add in a couple empty netters toward the end, and it makes it look worse. It was 5-2. to two, But the game was a lot tighter and closer than that. I think if you draw a string from the puck before he shoots it to the corner to where it goes in, and you deviate an inch one way or the other, I don't think that puck goes in. I think that was just like a laser precise, perfect shot mm-hmm. that just happens to go over his shoulder. Now, I even some think folks, it hit when I was looking at the replay today. It looked okay. like he got a just a slight piece of it because it looked like it just deflected upward just a little bit more than it was already. The trajectory looked like it changed just slightly. Okay, maybe so even less than an inch is my point. Okay, like a quarter of an inch <laughs> more of his shoulder would have had it go deflect up higher over the net. And I, but I, I hear people saying, you know, oh, he should have came out more to take more of the angle away. My problem is he's also got someone uh, coming on the uh, opposite side there looking for a one time. Now, yes, there was a defenseman there, and the goalie is supposed to play the shot, but he also has to respect the fact that there is a guy coming there. And if the pass does make it across, he still needs to make that slide. Mm-hmm. So if he comes out any farther, and the puck goes across, and somebody taps the puck in, then what do the the haters say? Right. right. Oh, he I, was too far out. And too it, aggressive. So too it, 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 you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Exactly. So it's, it's no it's, matter what you do. It's, it's unfortunate. I don't think we were kind of really went into this, but it was Martin Jones that played this game. Yeah. Aaron Dell played the last game, or the first the game we were Arizona. talking about. Arizona. Yeah. Then they followed up with Martin Jones, and there was a back-to-back. So then tonight's game, which was Vegas, uh, they went back to Aaron Dell. So I wasn't sure. I think when we were talking about it last week, we knew Aaron yeah. Dell was getting the Arizona game. We weren't sure how it was going to play out because it was a back-to-back. We mm-hmm. knew. You know, Jones is going to get one of those. Right. Um, I wasn't sure, and I, I think I guessed that he would play against Vegas. And <laughs> once again, I'm wrong. So, yeah. Um, uh, I thought, you know, it's it's unfortunate for Aaron, for Aaron Jones for Martin wow. Jones <laughs> because uh, I thought he played decent. I thought he yeah. I, he made some good saves. Yeah. I thought he kept he kept the Sharks in there, except for the first goal. The first goal really bugged me because, and it wasn't again, it wasn't completely his fault. And I'm not I'm not a Jones. Apologist, it was a bad goal. He gave up a goal in five hole. If you look at the at the play, Carlson was standing there. Like yeah. he didn't close down. The, this guy shoots the gap basically between Carlson and, and Vlasic on a giveaway, and uh, Carlson just sat there and watched him. And then he puts his soft backhander right through right through Jones. Yeah, that Jones needs to stop that. Mm-hmm. Carlson needs to step up there. Both of them are at fault. Right. And and I want to say Carlson a little bit more because he just didn't close that gap, and he could have easily. Yeah. But Jones definitely should have stopped that. No, so I, that, that made me mad. And I on agree. top of that, it was only a minute, roughly a minute 20 after the Sharks had just scored to take the lead. Momentum gone. It completely gone. Yeah. yeah, and you know, on a soft little backhand like that, I mean, that stick should be oh. flat. Like, I'm no goaltending coach, okay? And, and I'd, by the way, if you get a chance to go check out the practices, <laughs> check out Nabokov doing his thing out there. It's awesome. Yeah. He was throwing a medicine ball around with them the other day. Yeah. What was that? I don't care. Whatever. If it works, it works. But we'll... Regardless, course, that getting your core moving it could and, be, and yeah, sliding. Who knows? But anyway, again, not a goaltending coach here. But when it's a soft backhander like that, if you're sliding across and your stick is still flat to the ice, that should be a save. But he right? wasn't even sliding; it was straight on. Yeah, but, but sure. But the way when he was dropping down, like yeah. you would think that his stick is still there. How does it get? Yeah, I don't know. So again, yeah, that that one definitely on Jones needs to make that save. But I'm with you on that one. A good it, that shot never even occurs. Right. If Carlson's doing his job there. Now, again, I think that all in all, both Dell and Jones, and even in the third game we're about to talk about, I think this quote that we're about to hear from Bob Bugner kind of sums it all up, is that we're just asking our goalies to give us a chance. Just give us a chance to win. That's it, right? We're not asking you to go out there, stand on your head, and force us to, you know, force a win out of it, right? We're just asking you to give us an opportunity. So um, we're going to go ahead and play that that clip for you guys right now. And uh, this is Bob Bugner again. Uh, yeah, Deller's going in tomorrow. It's a back-to-back. He deserves to go back in. And, uh, you know, I thought Jonesy was uh, he was pretty decent. He gave us a chance. I think, you know, um, you, you know, the second goal was just, uh, it was, it was, sorry, their first goal was just okay. But, I mean, there's not much you could do on the other two. And, uh, you know, we asked our goalies, you know, not to try and have to win us a game, but just give us a chance. I thought he gave us a chance tonight. So that's uh, the quote from Bugner after the uh, the second game, St. Louis, and then tonight. Mm-hmm. It, it really holds true, right? And because yet again, the Sharks goaltenders, in this case Aaron Dell, right. did a fair enough, good enough job 
Um, actually, he played pretty stellar today, I would say. He, he actually went over and above, I thought. Um, but he gave them a chance to win. He, he truly did. Mm -hmm. And the D played a little bit better tonight, I thought, you know, uh, keeping them uh, out for the most part. Mm -hmm. There was times where we were getting overran and times where we were running around in our zone, but they, they tried to protect the net as best they could. I thought right. So um, you know, as again, another another game where you've got the goaltender giving you that opportunity to win, and the the Sharks just can't close out their ch scoring opportunities. You know, I'm I'm wondering about the goaltending um, in terms of Aaron Dell uh, responding better to Nabokov because he was his coach when mm -hmm. Aaron Dell was in the minors, and so he's already had coaching experience. And he mentioned when when Nabokov became the coach that he was excited to work with him again um, because he liked his style. And his style is what you were saying earlier. Yeah. It's pretty much unorthodox compared to, well, not that I know that many other goaltending coaches, but it's different. A lot of people don't see what he does or, or do the same things that he does. So um, maybe he takes to a little bit better because I feel like Dell has been playing better since the coaching changes. Yeah. I think, and maybe it's because Jones just hasn't been playing better and Dell looks shinier and <laughs> nicer, you know? <laughs> Although he did, he was over nine. 20 per save percentage yeah. tonight. Um, so he did he did play pretty well. But going back to the scoring chances and not finishing, man, Sharks had 20 shots on goal in that third period and couldn't... They scored one. Couture put that one away, I think, in the third to make it... Uh, he tied the game up one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. uh, but then once again, Vegas pulls away. So the Sharks just... They're, they can't finish. They can't get that goal. And I'm going to get into this later when I get into the yeah. stats and, and how sad they are, but... Uh, that third period is just a killer for the Sharks. They're not coming back from any games. If they're going into the third period and they're yeah. behind, go home early. Well, and, and and feeding off of that, where they're you know they, they can't bury a shot, right? I mean, Kerr's had a tweet. Kevin Kerr's had a tweet. And we'll put this on the screen here. Uh, basically, what he said was, you know, how how many tough saves has Subban had to make, you know, in, in goal tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Two, maybe three. Um, and he, I mean, he's right. So you know we're not we're not get, you're going to talk later on about perimeter shots right. and, and the sharks aren't doing a good enough job of, of making it harder for the goaltender right they're not doing a good enough job of getting in his eyes uh, like we've seen a couple goals going on Martin Jones I think it was last week we talked mm -hmm. about right we're not doing a good enough job of getting in their eyes making them uncomfortable standing in front of the crease um, you know getting those really in close opportunities we're getting a lot of those perimeter shots uh, and that's just not good enough you know uh, Malcolm Subban. Uh, he is not that good of a goaltender. I'm sorry. He he is not. He may play in the NHL, but he is not that good of a goaltender. I know somebody's going to pull up some some tweet with some recent um, you know stats on Malcolm Subban, something uh, about five one and one or two zero oh, and two against the Sharks. But he is not that good of a goaltender. I'm sorry. You know what he does have? He has pretty solid team defense around him. Now again, this goes back to something that I've been saying. I know people hate it, but I'm just going to keep doing it because this is what I believe. Um, I would rather have the Malcolm Subban of the league in goal, but with good solid team defense around him because that seems to work a whole heck of a lot better than if you were to have, look at Montreal, like Carey Price, right? Put Carey Price in it, but you can't play defense around the guy. This is how gonna go in. Chicago won with Niemi in goal. There you go. Niemi was not a great goalie, but he was good enough and he got hot during the playoffs and they had a great team defense that cleared yep. everything away. And this is why I keep preaching it's, it's, to me, the big problem, you guys think that the big problem is the, the, the goaltending, maybe, okay? Um, for me, the big problem isn't the goaltending. Is goaltending a problem? Maybe. Sure, I'll agree with you there. They could be better. Absolutely, they could be better. Everybody could be better. But for me, the big problem is they're not doing a good enough job of protecting that goaltender when it comes down to it. When it comes down to the other teams breaking into our zone, we're allowing them to do that. Carlson, case in point, where he was off on the side there, dude walks right up the middle and goes on a little, nice little soft sh shot five hole. Now, is that one on Jones? Does he need to be better? Absolutely. But the team's not doing a good enough job of playing good, solid team defense around him. So again, I'd rather have the Malcolm Subans of the league in goal with awesome, solid, great team defense around him than the best goalie in the league and Right. blah blah whatever in front of him now unfortunately right now we have goaltending that is okay not great subpar sure it's I, to it's me below, subpar below league average to me subpar is okay right right but we also don't have very good team uh, team play in front of right. him and that goes for team defense as well as putting the puck in the net because they're not doing anything really well right now I think they're, they're not they're, I mean, puck luck there's no puck luck um, they're holding on to the puck way too long, looking for too many passes. They're not trying to get in the goalie's eyes. They're not shooting. They're not doing anything. They're not even moving their feet in the offensive zone. Again, six on three the other day. 
No, no, nobody moving their feet whatsoever. Power play tonight. Nobody moving their feet whatsoever. And the funny thing is, uh, in, in Vegas, they puts the stick out. It was no sick. Puts the stick out in in the lane, the passing lane. That takes away Burns entirely. So now Burns can't do that one timer. This we've been asking for since last season. Put Burns in the OV office. Well, they figured that one out right away. Everybody and, knows it's coming. Yeah, so he puts a stick out in that lane, and it's like, well, mm-hmm. Carlson can't pass there anymore. And what happens? Again, we have a man advantage, and the one guy that's assigned to, to getting Eric Carlson pressures Eric Carlson. He has to make a frantic pass that's not going to Burns because the stick's in the lane. So, it, yeah, there's just way too many things going wrong for the Sharks right now. Uh, the best thing for them is this break. Um, you know, hopefully they get to a chance to kind of reset and reload mentally. Right. Because um, just nothing's going right for them. Yep. And I could sum up in one word, the game tonight was just boring. <laughs> just boring. You know, you, you expect them to come out fired yeah. up against Vegas. Uh, they really hate each other. And tonight there was a little bit, but nothing really. Mm-hmm. Reeves kind of got in there and was just smiling as he was being a yeah. punk in front of the net. <laughs> and that's about it. Like, there was not really any fireworks. Like, I was expecting a little bit more. Mm-hmm. A little more passion, a little more heart. I feel like that this team is just lacking both of those. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. It goes a long way. It's unfortunate, yeah. and I, but I think you're right. I think that there's, there's definitely some there's, heart that's missing. There's, like, nothing for them to rally around as a team to get them together as a team. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know. Well, you know what? I, I, I do say that there's, uh, in terms of heart on the team, there's one guy that I think uh, we, we picked up recently off of waivers from Pittsburgh. Thank you, Pittsburgh. Mm. Um, Nason, Stefan Nason. Uh, it sounds it looks like Nosen, but it's actually pronounced Nason. Um, this guy, you know, he's not going to be the the stud that you know we need. He's not the answers to our no. right wing depth issues. But you know what? He came in. Uh, he's played pretty well on that fourth line. See, our fourth lines looked a lot better since hey. he's been on there the last couple games. Right. I mean, much he, better. Definitely, he's looked. Uh, he, he's looked like he's adding a lot to that fourth line. Like he's adding speed. He's adding grit. He added a goal the other day. He had a nice big slap shot cannon of a mm-hmm. goal. Um, see, and the funny thing is, when you look at that goal, and you can go, well, the goaltender was a little off his mark. Oh, please. Would you he say that? Beat on Would you say he that? He just got beat. So when it's the Sharks goal, is why do we right. say that, right? Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. Look, so this guy <laughs> just unloads a cannon. Now, before that, though, and I'll let you go ahead and talk about this one. How did he get the puck? Oh, Brendan Dillon, man. He <laughs> made such a great play. I, I almost, as good as that goal was, I think Brendan Dillon's pass was, was equally or better than, than yeah. the goal. Uh, Dillon kind of looked up. Guys, head up. I think Pittsburgh, or Pittsburgh. Thank you for saying Pittsburgh earlier. <laughs> uh, St. Louis. St. Louis was on a line change. I yeah. think they kind of got caught. Um, and uh, Nasik was... Nason. 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 Man. Nason was sitting there by the blue line, uh, ready to go. And Dylan just cross ice, complete diagonal yeah. from one corner to the other, uh, as far as you can go without being offside, and puts it right under his tape. And he gets, he's fast, so he, yeah. he was quick off of the off the blue line, and he took it in, and he just, boom, that slapper, right? Just beat him glove side. Yeah. Just just smoked it. It was great. Really it was great, good stuff. Good timing for a goal. That yeah. tied the game, right? 2-2, I think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, so. really really good stuff. So, um, you know, again, he is not going to be the answer to our right-wing deficiencies. Okay? Yeah, don't but expect that every I, other night. I'm not. I will say this, though. I will say this. It, much like Barclay Goodrow, he started on the fourth line, right? Yeah. Started from the bottom, now he was there on the third line so actually tonight nason uh did get a little bit of a promotion he I mean, moved up yeah um and he started playing with uh with the third line guys i say once we get the lines right i think he's going to solidify the fourth line yeah i think that fourth line now can do some damage mm-hmm. there's a little bit of scoring but they're also going to be in there getting gritty and getting dirty yeah. uh getting hard hits in there getting a lot of speed putting pressure on the other team uh getting four good four checks in there yeah. and turning pucks over so i think our fourth line is finally going to be good. <laughs> but now the other three lines need <laughs> we've, help. <laughs> we've solidified our fourth line. The, the, perfect, <laughs> the perfect metaphor for this season is a sinking ship with holes. And you plug one up and another one comes up. And you plug that one and then you go, oh, there's another hole. And you plug that one and then this one pops up again. Right, it's just, right. it, it's insane. Yeah. So uh, hopefully the Sharks get enough fingers in there and <laughs> plug it all up because it's getting ridiculous. Well, Do you um, remember we started the season? Yeah. We had an even strength scoring problem. Yes. They were only scoring on the power play. Yeah. The power play was insane. That's right. And then they're like, oh, we need to work on five on five. But then they forgot about the power play. Yeah. Ugh. 
It's and so, the team defense was so not very good. All of a sudden, the team defense is tightening up a little bit under Bob Bugner. But and we now can't. The scoring is going we away. Can't score. Yeah, it's just no matter no matter what we fix or we attempt to fix, something else has a problem. And yeah. It's just it's going to be reflected in the stat pack that Aaron is about to jump into right now. So that is actually that's that is the end of the airing of grievances. <laughs> so now is it though? No, for this episode, right. well, maybe not even for this episode. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, now we are into the feats of strength. <laughs> All right, this is the stats pack. Go ahead. Brought to you by Berticelli's La Villa De uh, Italian Delicatessen. Good. Yeah? yeah, and they're in Willow Glen, and they are lovely people. You need to go in there and get some great Italian food. They got they're known for their raviolis and the crisp combo sandwiches, mm -hmm. but they got multiple other things. It's a little deli, so you can go in there to buy stuff to take home and eat. Or you can buy stuff to eat right then and there. Uh, there was a bunch of sports memorabilia up there. It's pretty cool. It's a really nice store. Mm -hmm. uh, their holiday hours are a little bit different. I think they're usually they're closed on Sundays and Mondays, sure. um, and they're open all the way through until uh, I think maybe even the day before Christmas Eve. I don't know. It's cool. Then they're going to be out for a while. But well, anyway. if you pop in there, do say hi to uh, Chris and or Trisha or uh, Patty, actually, mm -hmm. as well. Uh, tell them the Fin Factor sent you. So that is La Villa, and they are in downtown Willow Glen. La Villa, we feed the league. Right. Very good. Okay, so let's jump into these stats. I'm going to put okay. some earmuffs on so I don't have to listen to this, actually. <laughs> okay. So I was looking, I'm like, okay, what's wrong with the Sharks? Like, It's really hard to pinpoint one thing. Yeah. It, it's, it's difficult. And not that I did, but... I'm like, okay, the third period I feel like is just really bad. Mm -hmm. And I saw some stats being thrown around on Twitter. Uh, not even tonight. It was, uh, I think, last night. The goal differential. I was like, wow, that's really bad. So I wanted to take a look after tonight's game. What is it? So after the first period, or I'm sorry, the first period, uh, the Sharks are plus one. So they've scored one more goal than they've given up in the first period. It's good. You should be plus. Yeah. At least you're not minus. Yeah. Second period, minus 12. Okay, that went down very just quickly. Really bad. And then you get to the third period, it's double that, minus 24. Now, eight of those are empty netters, but still minus 16. I'll, we'll say minus 16, because yeah. empty netters, you just want to throw those yeah. out. Minus 16 in the third period. That's where they're losing their games. Yeah. They're losing, not even in the second, not in the first, really. Well, so the they, second being minus 12 doesn't help either, but yeah, I was. Right. Yeah. So then I wanted to take a look, okay. What, what's their record after, you know, leading after the first period, leading after the second period, or losing after the first, whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, if they're winning after the first period, if they have a lead, in other words, they're they're up going into the first intermission, they're 8-2. and two. That's really good yeah. for first period because the other team has two periods to come back. After the second period, they're 12-0. and 0. Yeah. They have a lead going into the third period, they lock it down. It's 12-0. and 0. That's really good. Yeah. That's fantastic. You can't get any better than 12-0. Then you look at the other way around. When they're losing after the first period and they have to come back, they are 1 and 13. That is bad. Ugly. When they're losing going into the third period, it's even worse at 1 and 15. Yeah. That's horrendous. The th it, it the team disappears. Yeah. What? You, this is when you this is clutch time. Yeah. There's no clutch time. Yeah. None. Two be, times. Yeah, to be Two fair, times. to be fair, I think most teams going when they're going into the third period and they're trailing, it, they're probably going to end up having a losing record, but 1 and 15. No, it, it's is, I mean, I'm not even saying it should be 500, but it should be like, yeah. I don't know, 4 and 8, sure, something like that. Sure. You know, yeah, something. 1 and 15 is pretty gross. Oh, it's terrible. So the team kind of and this is something that they've been saying you know, even the Sharks have been saying all season long, he's like, hey, we put together a good 40 minutes. It's just, or a good 45 minutes even, and then all that, of a sudden... That was my thinking. Like, there's no full 60-minute yeah. game. Yeah. And it's the first 40 or... The first 20 is good. First period, they're usually pretty good. Second period, no. Third period, even worse. Yeah. Overtime, though, three and one. Yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty good. <laughs> three goals, four, one against. The plus two, yeah. Right, that's that's good. I, I didn't throw that in there, sorry. Yeah, I just forgot. Okay. Um, the other thing I was looking at is like, man, they don't have a lot of goal scorers. I don't feel like, yeah. right? So I'm looking, and then I'm like, all right, they have 17 guys that have scored a goal on their roster. Well, let's take a look around the league and, and see how many other teams have. Nobody else has 17 except for New Jersey, and that's only because they, ta they traded Taylor Hall. Yeah, sorry. Everyone else has 17. <laughs> Sorry, but more than <laughs> yeah. Everyone has more than seventeen. Right. Nobody has less than eighteen. How about that? New Jersey has seventeen, was, but I'm only sorry, it was looking so bright when you said it that way. <laughs> Thanks. Nobody. Anyway, go ahead. 
uh, Taylor Hall got traded, so they actually had 18 up and you yeah. know, up until a week so they ago. Lost one. Right. <laughs> so it's just it's bleak. Yeah. Times are bleak. Yeah. And people, you know, I'm getting hit up on Twitter a lot because I said that the Sharks are going to make playoffs. And then I think I doubled down on it maybe a month ago. Sure. Or not even a month ago, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Are the Sharks going to make playoffs? I get this asked. I get asked this a ton. Do I think they will make playoffs? That's a different story. Yeah. Do I think they can make playoffs? Yes. Uh, they need to string together some wins. Now, if you look at the standings in the in the division, luckily, there's not... I don't know if this is better or not, actually. There's not one team that's taking it away. Everyone's kind of hanging in there. The Sharks, as of tonight, are in dead last in the Pacific Division. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, they are the St. Louis Blues. <laughs> Last year. Don't. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Don't. They're playing right into it. They're they're I still playing have right my into bowl, it. I promise you. <laughs> Everyone, no, they are though. You're we right. actually, we they're actually playing got right into it. Tweeted uh, tonight about yeah. it, like yeah. saying, "Oh, it's just like the St. Blues." Oh, come on. Nobody's gonna repeat what they no, did. No. Nobody. Uh, do I think the Sharks can turn the season around still? Yes, I do. I still think they can. Yeah. Um, they better get their act together. Call it blind optimism. If you want to. Right. Okay. After we just went over those stats, after we just talked about all the problems that the San Jose Sharks have, do I still think that they could potentially be a playoff team? Sadly, yes. I still think so. The, the reason is this. If Bugner is able to do the things that he's he's actually saying he wants to do, he's if the team can do what he was trying to get them to do, which is, again, play solid team defense, the goal is giving them a chance. Now, they've been able to do that recently, getting chances. We had 20 shots on goal in the third period alone tonight, okay, against the Vegas Golden Knights. So, for me, it's the goal scoring now is the, the issue. If they can fix the power play, not even like it has to be stellar, just get like a, a goal every, I don't know, five, six, seven. I'd, I'd say be every happy. Three chances. It, I'd be happy with five, six, or seven. <laughs> you want three? Okay, great. But for, for me, if you could just get a goal like now and then, that'd be awesome, right? Um, and that, that to me is the difference between winning a game and losing a game, especially when you're talking about losing games three to two. They had many power play chances to yeah. and couldn't score again. It's it's For me now, the, the problem is the finish. It's the ability to just finally put the puck in the back of the net. You're getting the shot on the goal, but you're not. it's not a good quality shot. It's not something that's hard for the goaltender to stop. The goaltender seeing it. If the goalie sees it in this league, if the goalie sees it, it's probably going to stop it unless it's a laser precise shot that goes over a shoulder. Right. Right. So um, <laughs> that to me seems to be, you know, the new the new issue. Now, if you can just figure out how to get back to putting that puck in the net, and I, I can tell you exactly what the problem is. The problem is with guys like Burns and Carlson and even Couture and especially Timo Meyer. Uh, these guys are going out there thinking, "I got to make a play. I got to make it happen. I, we got to win this game." And they're, and they're trying too hard. They're forcing the play. And in doing that, they're causing a turnover. They're causing you know a bad pass, an errant pass. Um, like we've seen so many times from Eric Carlson making a pass that just kind of explodes off a stick or it's a little bit off, but it's so hard, it's, it's gone now, right? Um, if they can tighten those things up, I still think with just, even just the first two lines, okay, just the first two lines of personnel and the blue line that we have, I think... That is enough to get us back into playoff contention. Now, you're going to throw some numbers out here about the amount of games left, the amount of points they would potentially <laughs> have to get, and what that means in terms of what their win percentage would have to be. And it's way better than our win percentage right now. Um, so it looks bleak. It looks dim. But go ahead and actually throw those I numbers I remember out. what it was now. It was, they have 40 games or so left? There's f there, I think tonight was 38. Okay. So they got 44. What? 44 games left and they need about 60 points yeah so they got to win roughly 20 of 30 of their next games 20 of their next right 30 sure whatever or, sorry not 20 30 of their next 44 games so yeah. make that yeah it's like over 600 win percentage yeah they need to win like two-thirds of their games do you think they can do it we saw them do it in November Here, here's what I think I, no exactly there you go right there they did it in November so and were the, was the personnel much different? If Coaching the, staff was different. <laughs> if the Sharks can pull themselves out of this before the season ends yeah. and make playoffs, it's weird, but it would make them a 
stronger, better team because they went through this adversity yeah. early in the season and struggled. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to be playing this kind of hockey that they need to be playing in order to make playoffs, they're basically in the playoffs right now. Their playoffs have started yeah. because they need to work their tails off to get there and then keep working their tails off. At that point, you have new habits yeah. because you're working so differently and so hard. Um, so it could be a good thing. I mean, I'm trying to put a little positive spin on this absolutely <laughs> horrendous month yeah. when they had so many home games that they're wasting away and not winning. Yeah. Um, and it's making the tank just dead, right? You were no, there tonight. How was it tonight? Actually, tonight the, the crowd was, was pretty good um, because it was 1-1 for a while there. And then they had some good chances even when they were down 2-1. to one. Um, But, you know, again, well, as soon as it went 3-1, everybody just, you know, like roaches when you turn the lights on. Everybody just started, you know, bouncing out. Yep. Which I can understand. There's only three minutes left and you're down by two. And I had to leave. Don't judge me because I had to be here. <laughs> what time is it right now? It's a little bit, it's about yeah. midnight, a little bit past midnight. Yeah. Guys, look, I didn't want to have to come here at midnight to shoot this show where all we're going to do is talk about how bad the Sharks are. And I hope you guys appreciate it. It's, and getting, we're it's getting harder to do these shows. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And that's that's not why we didn't do live because he was at the game I was at the tonight, game. So yeah. it was a little bit harder to do both. Uh, we'd be here until 2 in the morning shooting, which <laughs> we didn't want. Um, but, yeah, it is, it's getting harder. It's getting harder. And so uh, we hope you appreciate um, that we're... We're still wanting to sit in front of the camera. <laughs> We're still and here. And we appreciate you still tuning in uh, to hear about, uh, you know, the the woes right. that they have. So. so let's talk about the week ahead. Well, before we do that, can we just, uh, Timo oh. Meyer? Sure. Can yeah. we just, you, you just, can we rag on him a little bit? Yes. What is going on with Timo Meyer? It is not no, yeah, Timo time. It is not Timo time. No. <laughs> Timo time has passed. I'm keeping that like that until he T scores a goal. Okay. Oh, I like that? that. I like that. Okay. Timo time is uh, snoozed right now, we, we <laughs> could good. say. So thank you. Um, so no, I don't know what's going on with him. It, you know, his whole game is predicated on him being hard nosed, getting to the net, power forward, strong on puck, banging away, taking shots in the back. Maybe when you're in that crease area, right, in that in that low slot area. But that's his game. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the minutes were like, but he pretty much sat in the third period. Mm -hmm. I remember like looking around, and going, I haven't seen Timo in a while, and, and I, you know, I don't have the benefit of TV and broadcasters pointing these things out or you know anything. I'm sitting there watching, just watching the game, and I just have to notice, oh, Timo's not there. So it was even noticeable for someone just sitting there just watching the game, you know. And I'm having conversations with I was with my dad because this is birthday, and um, you know, so I'm I'm kind of you know half still watching the game, but I have my conversations. And even then, I noticed Timo wasn't out there because you, you're looking around going, what, "Where is this guy? He's just nowhere to be found." It, when he was on the ice, he was nowhere to be found. I couldn't. Yeah. He was just a ghost today. To me, the Sharks, their depth is so they're lacking so much depth, especially yeah. at wingers. You you miss one winger. Timo getting yeah. benched. Yeah. I'm not saying that's why he's missing. Just missing because he's not playing well. Mm -hmm. Hurts the team. Kevin LeBanc the other day got hurt and he missed the rest. You know, I think he he came back for one shift and yeah. then left. Hurt the team. Yeah, they couldn't they couldn't do anything. So the Sharks are just they're razor wire thin mm -hmm. on their depth. And if any of those guys go missing or just disappear, like in Timo Meyer's case, yeah, hurts the team. So those guys need to step up. Yeah, and we keep saying it. I feel like every week, but. They're just not doing it. Yeah, and I think the, to go along with that, we were talking about Timo getting in front of the net and getting in the goalie's eyes. We were talking about earlier. Yeah. Again, we had referenced it before, but the perimeter shooting, like that, seems to be all that we're capable of. You know, and it's interesting to hear what some of the players are saying after yeah. on post game stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have a clip right here of Logan Couture talking about the depth and or not the depth, but I think the question was, is this roster able to make the playoffs? Right. Right. So here we'll roll the clip. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we've got the players to, to win hockey games in this in this league, but I don't think we're playing the right way to win hockey games in this league. So there's a massive difference between that. We've got, in my mind, the personnel. I don't think that the personnel has decided that we got to play a certain way to win hockey games. You know, it's kind of like the same underlying message, and it's not just Couture saying it. Uh, a couple other players, and I'm trying to think. They even interviewed Timo tonight yeah. after the game. And they asked him about, you know, what's the difference between Bugner coaching and, and DeBoer? And he kind of was like, well, it's like the same message, blah, blah, blah. Like, to me, it was just like, he didn't really care. Like, it's just another coach, another day, another dollar. Who cares? <laughs> so, I, and I'm not trying, I'm not ragging on him too much. I don't yeah. want it because I'm, I'm kind of 
putting stuff into his mouth, but um, I, something's just wrong. Like something's just there's nothing there igniting him, and it's we can't make another coaching change. It's not the coaching. Yeah. So this team is just it's frustrating. It's so frustrating. You look on paper and you're like, this is this is a pretty decent team, and then yeah. You know, Another player I want to call out is Joe Thornton. Actually, oh okay, sorry. No, sorry, we're still Dumbo. doing the airing, airing of grievances. Sorry, apparently. I'm gonna I'm gonna air a little <laughs> bit more. Uh, Ryan Reeves has three goals on the year. <laughs> okay, this made me so mad. First, that he has more than one goal. <laughs> right, right. That Ryan Reeves, this guy, really, three goals on the year. Dylan Gambrell, and I'm picking on him because he's played over 30 games. Okay, has two goals. Mm-hmm. He's being outscored by Ryan Reeves, and you can't say the difference is time yeah. on the ice. Fourth liners. Right, but Ryan Reeves is getting less time than Dylan Gambrell. Sure. He's getting at least some power play time. Mm-hmm. Gambrell is. So that makes me mad. Joe Thornton, no goals. I'm not expecting him to be a 20 or 30 goal scorer, but put in put in a dozen goals, man. I mean, come on. Like, chip in. How many shots has he taken this season? Yeah. Zero goals? Yeah. Come on. We need you. We need you, buddy. I hate picking on you. I don't want to pick on you. <laughs> but we need you to step up. And not even just, I don't need 20 goals out of you. Yeah, just yeah, kind of, yeah. you know. Just a handful. Something. A handful. We need, some, yeah. we need that more scoring. Yeah. We need more goals. Anyway. All right. Well. I think I'm done airing uh, my grievances. You, you good now? You sure? Yeah, for now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at the week ahead here. We got, uh, uh, what was it, five-day break, was it? Five, we got the Christmas break. Okay. Now, I don't know what day it starts, but there's a freeze on trades. Okay. So I th- I want to say it's the 23rd, 24th, 25th, or maybe it's the f- 24th, 25th, 26th. I don't know because those are the days that the games are off. Um, the when they went to the lockout a while ago, players were complaining. I mean, yeah. that's terrible. You're home with your families at Christmas time, and you get a call that traded. you're traded. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. So they they put a freeze on trades. So I don't think we're going to see any movement mm-hmm. if we saw anything. Do I think a trade is coming? Yes, yes. I do. It's coming. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know who they're going to get. I don't yeah. know what's going to happen. <clears throat> There's also going to be a point where if the Sharks can't turn this around, it's going to, I don't want to say blow up, but some something's going to happen. Yeah, selling of assets that are going to expire anyway. Right. But no, go into, because um, you said something uh, to me the other day about the number of contracts. Yes. And I thought this was an excellent point that Aaron's about to make here. Um, he, he's talking about the number of contracts that they have, and this is why he feels that a trade's coming, apart from the fact that we just need help. Um, go ahead and, and, and delve into that. Well, we picked up Nason, and that picked up a contract because we picked him up off of waivers. Mm-hmm. That gives the Sharks 49 of 50 contracts. Now, there was a good article that came out on The Athletic. Uh, I can't remember if it was over the summer, but it was recently. It was about um, kind of like it was more to do with the restricted free agents and why GMs don't really give out a lot of offer sheets and all this stuff because this summer was supposed to be the summer of offer sheets. <laughs> come on. Uh, the reason is GMs don't have too many contracts. They already have too many on their team. So if they're at 48, 49, or even 50, no GM likes to get to 50 because then they're handcuffed on what they can do. They can't. Someone good comes off of waivers, they can't pick them up because right. they have no room in their contracts. So um, teams generally try to keep it less than 49. They don't like to even get to 49 because that's really pushing it. So um, I think there's going to be a trade coming because of that. Something's going to happen. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know when it'll be. I don't know what we're getting in return. But my thinking is one or two of those guys, at least two people, are going to have to be moved for one player. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're going to have to get less contracts Mm -hmm. than what we have. So we're sitting at 49. So that's what I was what I was we were talking about earlier. Yeah, no, I thought that was pretty good insight right there. Just basically by the the number of contracts, it looks like there has to be a trade coming because yep. they don't want to hold that many contracts. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, you know we're gonna have some of those coming off the books, but then you have to sign new guys to take their spots. So then you're back up to your 49 again, unless you're planning on the guys from the AHL stepping in, which we saw that uh, attempt. Nobody has. Yeah, we, right? we saw that attempt this season. It didn't yeah. work out so well. So uh, unless guys are stepping up. Right. Anyway, so just want to make a good point on that contract <laughs> thing. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, the game coming up this Saturday uh, in San Jose against the LA Kings. Friday. Friday, sorry. Friday against the LA Kings. LA Kings. Yep. This will be the battle for last place in the Pacific. Because <laughs> right now we're tied in points and LA's actually ahead of us. Yeah. Which is so sad because we were talking so much. I was talking so he much was, smack yeah. earlier in the yeah. season about seeing him at the bottom. So, um,. Yes, the Kings come into town, and they've actually been playing decent as of late. Yeah. A little bit better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, 
not as bad as they used to be. Still bad. This should be a win. I mean, it should be. If the Sharks lose to the Kings, it's going to be really bad. Yeah. I would push the panic button after that. Just saying. Okay. Because that puts, what, four, five, six losses in a row, and one of them is against the Kings <laughs> after a break at home? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, this should be a win. Slam dunk win. Okay. Now, I don't know if they're going to start. I, I'm going to guess they're going to start Aaron Dell because it is a back-to-back. So you're playing the next night. Yeah. We're playing Philadelphia. Yep. yep. At home again, so we don't have to travel, but it's a back-to-back. Who would you rather start? Would you rather start Jones against the Kings because it's his old team and get a little confidence booster in there? Yeah, for me, forget about what the goaltender's name is. Whoever is giving you the best chance to win, you play them against L.A. Period. Interesting. Because, because it's, it's you know, divisional. Philly's a definitely stronger team. I don't care. Okay. I, I, I want the points against the divisional opponent. See, I, mean, I look at it differently. I look at it as... Can your backup get a win? Mm-hmm. In this case, the backup is going to be Jones now. Dell's kind of taken over as a starter. Who do you start that you can get the win in both those games? And I think Dell's stronger against Philly than Jones would be. Okay. And then Jones is good enough to get that win against the Kings, so that's two wins back-to-back. I think they generally play Jones against the Kings anyway, if, if I'm not mistaken, though. I don't think... I feel like they didn't last time. Okay. But Well, one way or the other. Which is surprising because I was the same way. And then yeah. they started Dell, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. weird. I would say one way or the other, to me, it's it, it doesn't matter who's in net. It really doesn't. I think both of those goaltenders are capable. Right. And I think what it comes down to, again, are playing good team defense in front of whichever goaltender that you have, not allowing them the opportunity to get really high-quality chances, and that when you do get your chances going the other direction, got to bury it. you got to get in, especially Jonathan Quick, got to mm-hmm. get in his eyes. You can't allow him to see shots. If he sees the shot, he's going to make the save. So you're going to have to make him move. You're going to have to get in front of his eyes. You're going to have you know how we do. We get under his skin a little bit, oh, right? That's great. You got to get under Jonathan Quick's skin. He, with the the more you get him upset, he the more he gets off of his game. I mm-hmm. think. So um, again, to me, I throw the jersey in, in a fire. It doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter who it is. Either one of them. I think either one of them is capable. It's just a matter of how is everybody going to play around them? Are they going to do a good job protecting them? Um, so I don't know. I will say this, um, Aaron Dell. We we had thrown some stats up before about how Aaron Dell can't take back to back to back to back to back starts. Right. Right. Um, he can't handle a, a workload. And I had somebody that was at the the rink the other day was talking to me. He goes, Yeah, but you know what? How many times have we seen him get starts that many starts in a row? And I said, You know, that's a pretty good point because the last stats that we were pulling from were back when Jones got injured years ago. And since then, how many times has he really had? That was only two seasons ago, though. Sure, but how many times has he had a couple, you know, two, three, four starts in a row necessarily? Last year, he had a stretch where they were going to Dell because Jones was struggling earlier in the season, early in the season last year, and he couldn't Couldn't do do any better. I'll tell you this. So far this season, in his, uh, his string of starts, he hasn't looked bad. So our whole point over here on Fin Factor has been that with, with Dell, you, you can't rely on him to take a, a large workload. I wonder if maybe he's turning a bit of a page, having Nabokov behind him, having Bugner stressing team defense around him. Um, I, I, I wonder if you know Aaron Dell is starting to look better. And I think we're going to be turning into more of a 1A, 1B okay. type thing, not a mm-hmm. Dell getting you know three out of four starts kind of thing. Yeah. That's what I think. Okay. I think it's just going to be hot hand. Yeah. Who's going to look good and play good to get us a win? Right, right, right. If you're not, then you're out. The next guy comes in. Which gets really interesting when you start talking about signing a new contract and if Jones ends up kind of being a 1B with his contract, that one's going to be rough. That's a whole nother episode. Yeah, we're, we're not going to go there. It. It's more airing of grievances. We've already aired <laughs> grievances twice on right. this show. So anyway, um, don't leave because we're about to say something about EASHL. Do not leave yet, okay? Because I have news about EASHL. And you're going to want to hear this. This is the last time that we're <laughs> going to be doing EASHL. We noticed that uh, in our in our watch view time, whatever, it seems no one uh, is interested. So this will be the absolute last time that we uh, do this for you guys. So uh, hopefully you're still here to hear about the fantasy stuff. But we'll go ahead really quick. Put PS4 up on the screen. Yeah. Those are the names. Kiss them all goodbye. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and put up the Xbox uh, roster. Those are all the names. Wait, wait, wait. What? We are still going to be playing. Hold on. Okay. Kiss those ones all goodbye. Okay, now 
Yes, we are still going to be playing, and we'll still be online for you guys to play around. That's all, all well and good. But in terms of the video, it doesn't seem anyone really cares uh, when we're putting it up on YouTube right. for them to watch. So, um, so for those of you who are immediately tuning out uh, when we get to that point, we're, we're done with that. So <laughs> don't worry anymore. Okay, we do have. Uh, for, this is the last clip. And I do suggest if you've made it through this spiel that you wait uh, to watch this clip because... There's two clips. There's two. And one of them is phenomenal. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're going to start with that one. Okay. We'll start with... We'll start... Yeah. Okay. So here, we're going to roll these clips again. This is the last time. So uh, enjoy. Hoser. <laughs> Just keep in your mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Oh my god, that was awesome. That was awesome. Down here, yeah, I came out of nowhere a little bit and the challenge is down. Buck has dropped and we are back underway. Takes the shot, quick to stop. There it is, he scores! You're welcome. I, I picked that guy like a booger. Got my own rebound. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard that. So, uh, yeah, that first one, uh, my nephew actually playing goal, uh, decided to do a cartwheel or whatever that was. Uh, and then out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I, I picked that guy like a booger. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Shot it, got my own rebound, and put it in. Yep. It was fantastic. Shot we booger. ended up winning that game 9 to 2 or something, or we, we, 11 uh, to 2. Yeah, we dominated. And only because the other team kept trying to pull their goalie, not pull their goalie, but skated their fight. goalie, goalie to fight his nephew and the other goal. And Dante couldn't figure out that he had to, he couldn't figure out to skate out. And <laughs> so the guy kept getting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, and we kept yeah. getting power plays, and he kept yeah. skating out. And so we got a couple empty netters. It was just. Is funny. In any case, yeah. again, that is the last you'll hear of EASHL uh, through through the uh, the YouTube video here. So rest in peace. Right. Uh, on to fantasy, which side I'm not sure if people are interested in or not. Probably but not, but yeah, we'll do it. Fire away. Uh, we got, here's the first league, and I'm in third place, and I'm falling behind further. I actually got my butt kicked this week. Oh, boy. Um, same thing, guys are hurt, so I'm just kind of hanging in there. I actually had goaltending problems because I have Martin Jones on my team <laughs> so uh, yeah I'm going to try and move him or do something with him we'll see what's going on and then uh, here's league number two I'm still in first place but it's getting a lot closer um, they're catching up to me so um, I don't know how long I'm going to be staying at the top here and this is where I have Crosby and Mantha was the other one that was injured oh, okay, okay. and he just came off IR and I just found out today he's back on IR <laughs> he's back for like a game or two and he's right back on there so yep. Um, Detroit Red Wings, I'm sorry fans if you're a Detroit Red Wings fan and you're listening I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> sorry for your loss of Mantha and your loss of your season because you guys are worse than the Sharks So um, <laughs> and that's, that's saying it. a lot it is, <laughs> that's it for the fantasy update very good, okay, I think that is the end of episode number 72 mm -hmm. so uh, gosh, I guess uh, we're going to ask you guys to go ahead and uh, subscribe please uh, and hit that bell we didn't do a live today but normally we do a live before we shoot and it is a ton of fun. We get to field questions directly from you guys, your comments, your questions, and it's really, it keeps us kind of on our toes. We get to kind of answer in real time. And yes, uh, like I said, we are converting St. Louis Blues fans as well. So uh, <laughs> if you have any that you, you think would like to come over and maybe uh, chuckle a bit at uh, San Jose Sharks Wills, we're, we're fine with that too. We could take a beating. Uh, so yeah, no, uh, please feel free to jump on in and, and interact with us. It is a ton of fun and the community is actually uh, pretty accepting and, and very nice as well. So um, everybody's friends here. Yep. There you go. Kumbaya. Anything else you want to add? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have That's a good it. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, happy Hanukkah. Uh, That's today. Feliz Kwanzaa. I don't know. <laughs> what is Kwanzaa? I don't know. Festivus. Festivus for the rest <laughs> of us. In any case, thanks again, guys. Uh, first Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Right. Bye bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. 
You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.